Hello operators, Oscar Hotel 8 Sierra Tango November here from Survival Tech Nord. Today we're going to talk about the Yezu FT817 817ND and the latest model in the series, the Yezu FT818. We're going to talk about the community's expectations for the Yezu FT818 and why I won't be wasting my money on that rig. So stick with me and let's get started. You are listening to the emergency broadcast systems. This station broadcasts emergency news and official information on the air for a sign narrative. So I start this discussion as an operator who has used the original FT817 and FT817 ND for the past 20 years. I've used it since it came out. In fact, the one I have now is my third one, and that's the Yezu FT817 ND. But honestly, I use them, but I'm not a fanboy. Each and every one of my Yezu FT817s have bounced around the top box of my motorcycles on various trips around Europe and North Africa. So I think if any one of my Yezu FT817s had passports, they would probably have just as many stamps as mine does. I've been on SOTA activations with the little Yezu. I've been on radar challenge ops with the little Yezu. I've been on island on the air activations with the little Yezu. I've even come up with solar power and battery power solutions to extend its battery life. So I'm definitely not trying to say the Yezu FT817 didn't have its utility. I mean, it's definitely gone above and beyond. But honestly, when the Yezu FT818 was released, I was expecting a hell of a lot more from Yezu. Perhaps I'd take the little Yezu FT817 and 8 one eight further than Yezu had ever intended. Or perhaps Yezu thinks we're all fanboys and we're going to take whatever we're given and we're going to like it. Now I don't want to put words in Yezu's mouth, but there's one thing that's absolutely clear. Yezu isn't listening to the field operators who are using their gear. That's for certain. I'm hoping this video becomes the cure for Stockholm Syndrome so we can stop making excuses for what should have been the evolution of a good radio into a magnificent field radio, the one we've been begging for. Now with all that said, here are my top 5 reasons I believe the Yezu FT818 is a complete fail as a replacement for the Yezu FT817. Number 1 on my list is battery life and the time it takes to recharge the internal battery pack. Although lots of operators are excited by the new battery pack, the fact is we're still using AA nickel metal hydride packs. The AA pack wouldn't be so bad if the receive current of the radio wasn't so extreme. And if that wasn't enough, it takes 8 hours to charge up this internal battery pack with the charging circuit of the Yezu FT817. Sorry, I meant the Yezu FT818. So essentially, the battery update was just marketing. Nothing really changed between the 817 and 818. Number two on my list is the transmit output power. The original Yezu FT817 had 5 watts of output power. With digital modes, you were limited to about 2.5 watts of output. The Yezu FT818 has 6 watts of output. Many of us have been asking for 10 watts output power for the Yezu FT817 since it came out. Now I know all the fanboys are going to be saying, ah, there isn't a big difference between 5 watts and 10 watts, but with digital modes, I want to run at 5 watts minimum. And sometimes, just sometimes, speech compression along with 10 watts can make the difference between getting out there on SSB and not being heard at all. Number three on my list is the lack of an internal antenna tuner. We've all been begging for an internal antenna tuner for quite some time with the Yezu uh, FT8XX series, but we never get one. When you look at rigs like the KX2, KX3, some of the new Chinese radios coming out and the MCHF, you're wondering what the heck is Yezu thinking? Number four on my list is a two-part complaint. We only have a single mechanical filter port on the radio. The FT857 and 897 had two filter ports. If that wasn't bad enough, the filters are not included with this already overpriced radio. 
To be completely honest, I'm wondering why they didn't go the technological route of the Yaesu FT891. It's got a built-in roofing filter and probably the best receiver of any of the mobile or portable rigs I've ever seen from Yaesu. Number five on my list is the ridiculous DC socket on the back of the rig. For years, we've been begging for an Anderson socket or some other type of coaxial socket, for example, on the back of the rig, but they're just not giving it to us. Now, of course, the ham radio community is pretty clever, so we've come up with lots of different contraptions to help uh, reduce the likelihood of this port failing. But it's only a matter of time before it fails, regardless of what we do. Some of us have even taken it a step further and completely removed the coaxial port, tapping straight into the circuit board of the Yaesu FT817 and 818, because that's how ridiculous this port actually is. Now, until recently, the Yaesu FT818 was about 800 bucks in the United States. Now, personally, I think that's a ridiculous price when you have to add on the cost of the mechanical filters. Uh, you'll probably want to add a speech compressor, you'll need some spare batteries, and uh, all in all, it adds up to about 1100 bucks or more. For that amount of money, I'm wondering why wouldn't we just go ahead and buy the Yaesu FT857? and build ourselves a small uh, 5 or 10 amp hour battery pack from lithium iron phosphate batteries to go along with it. We could almost make the same argument with the Yaesu FT891. It's got an excellent receiver, IFDSP, it's got the roofing filters built in, add ourselves an external lithium iron phosphate battery pack, and it all comes in at about 100 bucks less than the FT818 with all the goodies. And it's not like Yezu doesn't have the expertise in the house. I mean, uh, back before they sold off the rest of their shares to Motorola from uh, Veritex Standard, they used to make radios like this VX1210 Man Pack. Excellent rugged HF radio that was basically bulletproof. And it has many of the features built in that we've been asking for for the Yezu FT817 and 818. If that's not a convincing enough argument for you, perhaps we should take a look back in history at the Yaesu FT897. This was a magnificent field radio. Personally, I believe if they would have taken the FT897 and updated it with the technology from the FT891, the roofing filter, the IFDSP, we would have had a magnificent field radio to replace it. So let's take a moment to envision what the uh, Yaesu FT8 one nine field radio might actually be like. Well, it would have 10 watts of output minimum, but preferably 20 like the FT897 before it. It would definitely be a DSP radio like the Yaesu FT450 and FT891 with IFDSP, roofing filters, and so on. The Yaesu FT819 would have an internal lithium ion or lithium iron phosphate battery pack. It would also include a wide voltage input so we could connect any DC source to charge it up, including a solar panel. The FT819 field radio would also come with an internal antenna tuner, uh, perhaps optionally as it was in the VX1210. The 819 would have a received current no higher than 300 milliamps. That 300 milliamps would be acceptable because we would have a reasonable display. The 819 would have a USB port allowing CAT control and an internal sound card to be accessed through a single cable with your PC, tablet, laptop, Raspberry Pi, or whatever. This would entirely alleviate the need for any external devices for the rig. And finally, the size of the Yaesu FT819 would be about the size of two 818s stacked on top of one another. Now, I've already mentioned earlier in the video that the Yaesu FT817 and FT817 ND has gone above and beyond the call of duty. Let me take a moment to explain two serious mistakes Yaesu has made. First, they removed the Yaesu FT897 from their product lineup. Second, they didn't adequately address the requirements or the needs of their user base operating in the field with the Yaesu FT818. 
So a couple of things have changed in the ham radio world since the Yaesu FT817 came out. Ham radio operators have actually evolved. We're not just sitting in parks operating our favorite modes anymore for an hour or two at a time. Many of us in the amateur radio community now use our rigs as tools with utility and purpose in the field. So when you call something a field radio, we actually expect it to be. So the mistakes Yezu have made? Well, first, they didn't give us a way to graduate from the Yezu FT817 or 818. There's no step up. There's no place to go for a field radio. So operators who are looking to graduate or have outgrown the Yezu FT818 would be looking for something like the Yezu FT897, but it doesn't exist. And although the fanboys are going to say the FT450 is a replacement for the 897, that's just nonsense. Yezu hasn't given us a field radio upgrade path. They simply don't make a good field radio anymore. You know, the funniest thing about all this, if Yezu would have called it the FT817 MK3, added the mechanical filter and the TCXO, we wouldn't even be having this conversation. Let me know what you think in the comments. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you think the 818 is a fail? And if you had a chance to build your own radio, what would it be like? Let me know in the comments. If you're supporting the channel through Patreon, PayPal, or simply sharing my content, you're absolutely magnificent, and I couldn't do it without you. For the rest of you, if you like what I'm doing, if you like the content I'm creating, consider leaving me a comment and a thumbs up to let me know. And if it's not too much to ask, share this video with someone or someplace where other operators might enjoy it. Rock and roll, guys. Thanks for watching. Ciao.